I had two requirements when I was designing this stand for the bellows. It had to be light enough to be carried around when it was fully assembled and it had to be easy to dismantle and store flat when I was done with it. The base of the stand is made out of wood and the whole thing is just mortised and tenoned together. The uprights get bolted into this base. The underside is counterboard to hide the nuts. The uprights are made from half inch square bar. Carriage bolts are used to bolt down the uprights to the base and I have the bolts welded in position so they can't get lost when I move things around. These rivets are decorative. The whole thing is actually welded together. I needed the welds for strength and this is the inside face of the upright so no one's ever going to see it. So I wasn't worried about welding here. The tiny crossbar welded at the top end of the uprights positions the wooden crossbar that holds the two uprights together. This wooden crossbar gets bolted to the uprights with a couple of cross dowels that I've made out of half inch square bar. When you're laying out the position for these cross dowels, remember that this crossbar gets slid into the forks at the top of the upright, so you need to be able to loosen the bolts back enough to be able to get around whatever decoration you're putting at the top end of the uprights. The four half inch bars for the uprights are forged in exactly the same way. I start by laying out the location for the openings in the half inch bar. The length of this slot is in guesswork. I've taken the time to experiment with a couple of short lengths of half inch bar so I know exactly what length I need. The slot is carefully cut from both sides, it's forged to shape, and then it's drifted with the actual plate you're going to be using. I need to hammer the sides of the opening down to get the slot back to the proper length, so I'm just inserting the plate here to make sure that I don't hammer down too far. Once the plate is driven in place, I can finish shaping the sides of the opening. If all went well, the plate should be sitting pretty much parallel with the sides of the opening. If the plate is going off in one direction or the other, you may need to clamp the whole thing in the vise and then twist the half inch bar slightly to realign the plate. You want this plate to be sitting pretty straight, otherwise it will cause problems when you attach it to the other side. To get the material for the hook portion of the plate, I drilled a hole about 3 eighths of an inch away from the corner of the top edge of the plate, and then I cut two slots up to that hole. You can see on the right how I've radius the top edge of the plate. That's going to allow me to unfold that tail portion and forge it into the hook.
The bottom of the legs of each of the uprights is just forged into a very simple pad foot. I start by creating an offset about an inch away from the end of the bar and then I thin down the leg above that offset to make a graceful taper back into the half inch bar. I use a cross peen to forge out the pad and then I just cut and drift a half inch hole that I need for the carriage bolts. And then it's just a matter of curving the legs to shape and welding everything together. You just have to remember that the assembled uprights are a mirror image of each other, so you just have to make sure that the wells are facing the side, facing the bellows. Thank you. 